Hi everyone. And thank you for coming for to my big brother celebration of life. Mel was there when his six brothers and sisters were born and came into this world. And now he's at the pearly gate waiting for us. Probably he has a piece of wood that he's carving into an angel with his now calm and steady hand. I'd, I'd like to share some memories of my brother with you. My big brother had the responsibility to walk me to Mary Immaculate Church every Friday so I could go to Mass. Now you gotta keep in mind that these legs on this giant were so long that even a short stride of his walk, I still had a run to keep up with him. But rain or snow or sleet or the occasional sunny Pittsburgh day, LOL, he would get me to church on time. I can remember Mel going a couple blocks up the street to the little grocery store that was up there, little mom and pop store called Michael's. And with a dime of, of money that he had earned, he would buy himself a Pepsi and a bag of chips. Yes, I said, with a dime, he would buy a Pepsi and a bag of chips. He, we, at that time, we lived on the second floor of that house on Madison Avenue. And when he came home, he would not come up the steps, but stay on the bottom of the stairway and devour his little treat because there really wasn't enough there to share with his six siblings that were waiting upstairs. But when we saw that he was there, we would holler, Ma, Mel won't give us any chips. But by the time she would get to the top of the steps to holler at him to, to tell him to share, share it with us, his tasty treats were already gone. Mel's first job, or at least the first job that I can remember, he was an usher at the Garden Theater. Now, you got to keep in mind, though, that this was before that auditorium became known for showing those less classy movies that you wouldn't even take your mama to go see. But I believe that was probably the beginning of him loving movies and his inspiration to buy the VHS movies and the CD movies. And well, if anyone's been to his house, you know he has shelves and shelves of these things all over the place. He really liked his movies. He graduated Allegheny High School in 1961 and shortly after that had volunteered to go into the United States Air Force. He went to boot camp and after, well I guess they call it boot camp in the Air Force, I don't know. But after that, he uh, was stationed in Amarillo, Texas. And then shortly after that was transferred to uh, Anchorage, Alaska. It was Good Friday, 1964, when Alaska had the Great Earthquake. It was a 9.2 earthquake. And we had no idea if he was alive. Now, you got to keep in mind, back in 1964, there was no internet, there was no cable, there was no Facebook or Twitter. So all we had to rely on was the three television stations to see what was happening there on the on the news broadcast broadcast. Uh, Mom and Dad got in touch with the American Red Cross, but no word. Easter came and it was not a happy Easter and uh, still no word on if, if he was okay. It actually took five days after the quake happened before we even got word that he was okay. And at the time of the earthquake, he was in the barracks and uh, had crawled out into the hallway and as he was crawling through the hallway he cut his knees and fortunately that was the only injury that he did have and we were blessed to have him for another five decades when he left Alaska he brought back three of the most beautiful necklaces that you've ever seen. Sissy and Nietzsche's were identical 
and they were oval shape and I think they were made out of ebony and on them was a ivory rose that was embellished right on top of it. Mine was a little wafer of ivory and it had a walrus carved into it. <sighs> wow, <laughs> you know, the three of us treasured those necklaces until eventually time came and as with everything else came and took them away. When it came to Christmas, Mel was no Scrooge. And I had wanted so badly, and he got it for me, the col an album collection of Mad Mike's Moldy Oldies. Now, some of you may have gone to Dance Land, if you all remember Dance Land, at Westview Park. And so you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, another year, he had bought me a digital watch and also a, a digital clock. Now, you may not think, you young whippersnappers may not think anything of that, but but these were the first time that it came out and it was really a treasure to have something. I was the first one on the block with a digital watch. And for those who can remember the days when there was no digital watches or digital clocks, then I guess you're as old as me, if not older. In 1969, my big brother took me the hippie to the North Hills Village movie theater and we saw the movie um, Easy Rider. Now I guess that movie must have been really really super inspirational for him because it was shortly after that that he got a Harley. <laughs> I guess some of you probably don't even know that. But I grew up, got married, Moved to Florida. <laughs> and uh, my visits with Mel were few and far between. But the past couple of years on my birthday, he would send me a birthday card. And in the card was a couple bucks with instructions for me to go out and buy a beer. But I told him I never bought a beer. I would go out and buy a Captain and Coke instead. <laughs> That's my drink of choice. The last time I saw Mel was at Mom's 90th birthday. And I was so looking forward to seeing him and, and the rest of you guys when I came up for her 95th next month. I'm really sorry that I can't be with, with you folks today. I love you. And I also wanted to thank you all for coming today. And I'll let you know that the Keys family loves you too. Thanks again for coming, guys. Love you.